break from the discussion. But you, uh, you uh, touched on many topics I think the audience will, uh, will engage in. Uh, you know, talking about, that you, you mentioned the stimulus package, and I guess one, most economists I've read uh, have indicated, uh, whether it be on the liberal wing or the conservative wing, that without it, uh, this uh, recession, depression, whatever you want to call it, would have been much worse, and it did stop it. But the general public doesn't perceive that they got a whole lot out of that. Uh, and I think a lot of that, the congressman, was because it kept a lot of people on the job, but they didn't see a lot of uh, ready-made projects uh, occurring around the country, and so visually they didn't have the sense that that money was really being spent wisely for uh, new projects going forward. How do you think we ought to manage it from here on out uh, as we continue to spend the rest of that stimulus money, and then as we set our priorities for it as a country, moving in and moving forward to be competitive globally in the next 15 to 20 years, which is what this should be about. And of course, Webster University has over 109 campuses around the world. Uh, 22 states, 9 countries, well, probably the most uh, global campus anywhere in the United States. And so that, you're speaking, uh, hopefully, to the choir uh, here tonight, but it's so important that we educate young people to be competitive in that environment, not the environment of our parents. I agree, I agree, and, and, and education also needs, uh, needs to catch up with the rest of the world, American education. When, when you think about us steadily losing ground uh, to, to other countries and, uh, and uh, large uh, U.S. corporations asking for more and more visas every year to bring in talent from outside of this country, uh, that has to stop. We have to do a better job of educating our own. And yet I'm willing to commit the resources public education to higher education in order for us to be competitive uh, uh, globally. Uh, and now you talk about the stimulus. Uh, as you know, Vice President Biden uh, uh, has jurisdiction over the, the stimulus. Uh, you can go online uh, and, and, and look at, at the daily spending uh, of the stimulus. But I, I can give you some examples here of um, um, one is the Danforth Plant Science Center being a beneficiary of the stimulus package in order to help create uh, uh, jobs for the 21st century, uh, to find new methods uh, for, for fossil fuel, for, uh, for uh, discovering uh, new methods for fuel. Uh, that, that's one example. And, and, and then if you'd be talking about bricks and mortar, uh, I think about Tucker Boulevard, the, uh, the street that runs in front of the post dispatch. I see uh, Joe Anderson here. So good to see you again, Joe, a former employee of the post dispatch. But Tucker Boulevard was caving in. Uh, there, there was a system of train tunnels underneath the street. Uh, and through the stimulus, we were able to direct $13 million to that project in order uh, to reinforce the street <coughs> rebuilding so that the new Mississippi River Bridge can uh, uh, come come in to Tucker Boulevard. And, and, and that's just a, a couple of examples of what has happened uh, with the money. As those of you know that have been here before, I ask you to uh, give your first name and you ask your question, would please stand and make your question uh, short. In other words, within a minute or so, not a 10-minute uh, question with, uh, with that approach. So who's got the first question this evening? Your elections, you have a, a sizable drop-off, uh, and, and particularly among African-American voters. Uh, and, 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 and here's what, to offset that, uh, what I tell my party is that uh, give people something to vote for. Give them a reason to come out. Talk to their issues. And, and as we know, uh, the, 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 the issues that impact the African American <coughs> community are severe. Uh, we have 20, we're hovering at 20% 
unemployment in my district among African American males. That's unacceptable. That's why we have targeted uh, training and uh, job retraining money uh, into the first congressional district through the stimulus. Uh, and, and, and so the, I, I suggest to, to the other candidates that you speak to those needs. You speak to that constituency group. Uh, if you if you have a constituency group uh, with certain needs, um, what I've been taught in politics is to try to address them. Try to address those those issues that impact them. But if you just think they're going to come out and vote for you because you got a D behind your name, uh, you are fooling yourself. So, I mean, look, we have, and, 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 and look, the African-American voter is just as sophisticated as any other voter in this country. They know when it's, it's in their best interest to vote for somebody. And so in 12, you'll have a different scenario. You'll have a very popular president among African-Americans back on the ballot. So, of course, uh, dip, um, Democrats up and down the ballot will probably benefit uh, from him being on the ballot. I just don't understand uh, in this year why you have some of my, my moderate uh, colleagues uh, with a D behind their name running away from this president. Uh, they, nobody's happy with him. People on the right think he's, he's moving in, in too far, too far to the to the left. People on the left think he hasn't done enough because he didn't get it done overnight. I, I think about uh, what he said during the uh, the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and this kind of this kind of frames it on, on, on how people look to Obama. He said, "You know, what do they expect me to do? Go get a straw and suck all the oil out of the <laughs> Gulf of Mexico?" I mean, basically, that's what the people have put on his shoulders. Uh, I, I think he's doing a great job as president, but you know, I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. My name is Nathan Maxwell, uh, Congressman. Thank you for coming today. Uh, what I wanted to ask you about was uh, your projections on green green sector jobs. And that's those stimulus funds. What, what do you see happening here in St. Louis uh, regarding green sector jobs? <coughs> Nationally and in St. Louis. I see that as a as, as an emerging economy, and, and an emerging sector that if we invest in it properly, if we give the incentives to private industry, uh, that will be a new industry um, that that the that the American people can own, that that, that we can take pride in. If, if you think about. Uh, this administration and how the U.S. Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Labor, and Commerce are, are, are pushing and incentivizing private businesses to actually come up with, with, with uh, new technology, uh, uh, new energy saving uh, uh, techniques, uh, and inventions. Uh, I, I see that as being, as, as being one of the uh, one of the ways uh, to pull us out of this uh, this, this uh, economic downturn, if we move quick enough to create jobs, uh, and 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 with a, with a combination of, of, of government support as well as private industry uh, pushing uh, for for that job creation, uh, that that could help us get out of. Thank you for the question. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Rick Monica. Congressman Clay. I'm glad to be here again. I have two quick related questions. I understand that the Senate, so it's not your part of the country. Senator Reid has invoked closure for the Pay Fairness Act that will end the 20 year some percent wage gap between men and women. And I'm just wondering why, first of all, is it a good idea to have closure now? Are they going to actually vote on bills in this post-election session 
But why have the Democrats taken so long to, to invoke closure instead of let the Republicans tie stuff up for two years? I agree with you. Uh, I, I, I like your shirt. Is that a corner hand? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's 2009. 2009, and I don't know. Okay. What? Why is 2009? <laughs> 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 Filing. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I think, and I agree with you, uh, that, that Senator Reid uh, waited too long to do some of this. And, and, so, and some of the legislative initiatives uh, were done in the wrong order, I think. You know, we did climate change in the house. <coughs> and then now it's languished over there in the Senate for about 18 months. And we passed it early on. He probably should have went with health care first. And then he would have had all of his acrimony. Plus he had 61 votes at that time. So I mean he had a, a, a filibuster proof majority uh, early on. Now they, they were so confident that they were going to be able to replace Ted Kennedy's seat with another Democrat. And that didn't happen. Uh, Senator Brown was elected. So they lost that governing majority. And that's when they really started to stumble uh, over, over in the Senate. And, but, it, but it had an effect on the other in the House because the House members uh, started getting antsy and starting started to tell our leadership, those from more conservative areas, started telling our leadership, we, we are not going to take these votes that are meaningless. We're not going to take votes that, 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 we, that we walk the plank for. And then it sits over in the Senate and it dies. I mean, so that's why you, that you, you <coughs> after that, after Brown was elected, you started to see a different strategy where the House leadership would require uh, Senator Reid uh, to take the votes first and then send us a final product so that the House will then say, yeah, because we, we know whenever the House passes, the Senate will change. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. So, uh, and I used to be a state senator, but I just can't stand senators. <laughs> Thank you for the um, Congressman, uh, two questions. First, what is your prediction as far as whether or not the Republicans will take over the House, number one? And number two, we talk about uh, that it's expected that turnout among African Americans and arguably other Democrats are going to be lower at this time. Well, when you've got the Republicans energized, that automatically means that Republicans will do better, and couldn't it make Obama's next two years even worse? I mean, so is there any effort to try to tell uh, people in your district, for example, I mean, there's, there's talk of the threat of trying to impeach him, you know, stuff like that if the Republicans take control of the House. So anyway, I, I, I just wanted to get your thoughts about the turnout issue, whether or not there's being efforts to ramp that up, and B, your prediction on whether or not the Republicans, how the Republicans are going to do as part of the House. Yeah, uh, let's, let's start with the predictions of, of the future of the House. Um, I mean, I've, I've heard all kinds of, of numbers, Joe, uh, from uh, 90 seats being in play <coughs> to uh, uh, anywhere from 20 to 60. Uh, I feel confident that Democrats are defending their seats. I feel as though uh, when the, uh, come November 3rd, the day after the election, the Democrats will still be in power in the House. We will still be in the majority of the margins just my unqualified <coughs> uh, the on the issue of revving up uh, the base vote uh, there, there is still time I mean so I'm not writing this election off uh, 